If you prepare late for your two-handed backhand, I'm gonna help you fix that problem in this video. I'm gonna be taking you through a three-step process to address the underlying problems that are causing you to prepare late. The first part of it is gonna be making it a priority within your practice. Now, potentially you think you are focusing on it, but what I find when I chat to players is they're normally working on too many things all in one go. So if you're trying to work on your preparation, you're trying to work on the timing of your swing, you're trying to work on your swing path, keeping your head still through contact, and your follow through, it's gonna to be too much stuff for you to do well at any one time. Our brain can only process so much information, so you need to focus on certain things and work on them until they're done. And obviously the first place to start with tennis strokes is the preparation. A lot of the time players are trying to correct problems that can't be corrected because it's nothing to do with the swing biomechanics. The issue was they either weren't prepared in time or they weren't set up in the right position. So that's why it's really important that if you prepare late on your two-hander, you need to fix the preparation first. So that's what we're gonna be doing here by going through the next two pieces of the puzzle. So the first thing that you're going to need to do in order to be able to fix your late preparation is react to the ball more quickly. The number one thing that causes late preparation on the two-handed backhand is people simply not being able to react visually, not being able to read where the ball's going, and because of that, they don't start their preparation in time. So if you're not preparing until the ball's crossing over the net or it's bouncing on your side of the court, this is 100% what is gonna be going on with you. But even if you're a slightly higher level, you can still struggle with this side of things it's just a relative thing. Instead of the ball crossing over the net, potentially the ball is a few meters off your opponent's racket, when in reality, the faster you can detect where the ball's going, the earlier your preparation can be, and the better quality of opponent you'll be able to deal with. So being able to read where the ball is going is crucial. And unfortunately, what this generally means is that your visual system isn't functioning at a sufficiently high level to allow you to make these visual predictions because tennis is hard. Every single shot you deal with is different and our daily lives don't generally prepare our visual systems to deal with the demands that we need in tennis. There's a lot of different visual skills that are involved. The good news though is you can actually train those visual skills. There's very simple training drills you can do to improve your ability to read where the ball's going, track the ball, and all that good stuff. To help you with that side of things, instead of going into it here, I've created a free program that's gonna show you a number of different exercises that's gonna help you to improve your tennis visual capabilities. If you would like that free program, I'll place a link up there, I'll place a link in the description. Click on either of those links, I'll take you over to a page, enter your details there, and I will send you this free vision program and I can assure you, improving your vision is absolutely game-changing in terms of your preparation. The final thing that you're gonna to need to do to fix your two-handed backhand preparation is improve the quality of your footwork. Tennis movements are very unusual and very unnatural. Unless you've practiced them in a very deliberate way, you won't be doing them very efficiently. So working on your footwork and programming in specific footwork patterns is really gonna save you a lot of time. And when you combine this with reading where the balls go more quickly, this is how you fix late preparation. So we're gonna be going through the different footwork patterns, of course, starting with the split step, because all high level players do a split step for a reason. It allows you to react and move into position more quickly. Now we've got two pieces to the split step. We've got the timing. So I'm gonna be landing from my split step just after my opponent makes contact, because then hopefully I can quickly read where the ball's going. I'm storing the elastic in my muscles, and then I can react and move off into position. So we've got the timing of the split step, which you'll need to practice and kind of focus on within your practice, and that can take a period of time, like I mentioned earlier. But then we've got the technique of the split step. So there's a few key features. We need to land with a wide, stable base, so a hip width and a half to two hip widths apart, depending on flexibility. We're landing on the balls of our feet, and the inside of the balls of the feet, so we're pushing off our big toes. And the combination of those things allows us to react quickly in whatever direction we're going to be moving in. If you land with your feet close together, it makes it really hard to move out quickly to the wide balls because it prevents you from doing a drop step, which we're gonna look at in a moment. So we need this wide, stable base, and then we want to lower our center of gravity. So we're bending our legs a little bit so our shins are moving forwards our body's moving forwards hopefully our shins and our body are at the same angle 
This helps to evenly distribute the force through the big muscles in the leg to allow us to be efficient and powerful. We also want a neutral pelvis. So if our butt is sticking out like that, one, it's less efficient, two, it's a little bit of an injury risk for the hamstrings. So we want to be landing more like this. And you just have to practice it. This might seem like overkill, but it's so important. Just practice it over and over again, landing in this split step, transitioning in from different directions, transitioning in from different legs. So I've hit my ball, I've come back, and then I'm transitioning into the split step. It just needs to be second nature so that you don't think about it. But by getting the timing and the quality of your split step, it is gonna help you prepare so much quicker and get to balls so much easier. So once we've got that, then the next part is gonna be a pivot step, which generally also includes a unit term. So we know for biomechanics, we're gonna be loading off our outside leg. So we need our foot pointing roughly in that direction. We need our pelvis in that direction. We're gonna be driving through the leg and then using the torso. So we need to get the torso side on and the pivot step and unit turn is what initiates the start of that process. So after I've done my split step, I'm then gonna do different types of pivot step. So if I'm trying to get to a wide ball, I'm gonna be doing a drop step. So as I do my drop step, I'm also gonna start my unit turn and change my grip at the same time, depending how you hold the racket in your ready position. So the way you practice is just to get used to the drop step first. So here I'm trying to stay low, but the ball of my foot lands underneath my hip. My shin is pointing like that so I can push off. So that's the key feature to get used to that. Then start to add in the unit turn at the same time. And then the next piece is to start to push off this leg as well. So I land, push off and then step. And you'll see without much effort, I can get all the way over to the outside of the court. And this is something you just have to practice over and over again until it's an automatic habit. So start off in the standing position, get used to it, and then add in the split step, get used to it. And then again, you can try transitioning in from different positions. So maybe I come in from there and then I react. Maybe I've hit that wide ball, I come back, split step, and then react. But by programming these footwork patterns, it will save you so much time when you're on court. The second one that we're gonna work on is gonna be a shuffle step. So this is when the ball's a little bit closer. So I might be hitting from an open stance or I might be doing a shuffle and then stepping into some kind of neutral or closed stance. But I land from the split step, I push off my right leg, my left leg steps out and I just do a shuffle. And once again, notice what happens with my upper body. As soon as I start that movement, my upper body is turning as well. Like where your racket ends up on your unit turn, that's a style versus substance thing. Some players are right back there, some are up there. Some players have the racket there. What we're focusing on is the pivot step with the shuffle step and getting the body turned on and we're loading into the outside leg. And again, it's just a case of practicing it until it becomes a habit. Now, I already mentioned, sometimes we might be stepping into the ball. So sometimes the pivot step is just gonna be a case of turning my foot, planting it, and stepping in. Or turning, planting, doing a couple of shuffle steps. But the initial process of programming the pivot step with a unit turn stands. Now here I'm just moving laterally. Obviously when you play, you're gonna to have to move in different directions. So I want to practice both of these variations, kind of moving back in different directions, maybe moving forwards a little bit. Obviously when I go forwards, now it's more of a kind of a cross running step, but the key piece is gonna be the drop step, the foot, and then moving into there. Same thing for the shuffle. I need to go that way, I need to go this way, I need to step forwards as I do it. And when you play, you're not gonna be going, okay, which step do I need to do at this time? You're gonna practice all of these footwork patterns, they're gonna become a habit. And then as you improve your visual function, you can recognize where the ball's going. Your brain is just gonna to start to draw on these footwork patterns. And between the visual side and the footwork side, it's gonna save you a massive amount of time. You're gonna prepare way sooner and this is gonna fix the problem.
So now that you understand the three steps, we need to talk just a little bit about timelines because it probably won't be an overnight fix. To get your visual system functioning better, some stuff will improve quickly, but often it can take a little bit of work to get your visual system functioning at the level it needs to to play tennis in the way that you want. When it comes to learning these footwork patterns, it's about repetition, it takes a bit of time, and then you need to be able to incorporate it within your play. It can take six months to be able to do a split step with good timing automatically without having to think about it. And it's okay to spend that long on one thing, because tennis is a sequence of events. Split step, first step, movements the ball along with the unit turn, and only after you've done that stuff, then do you hit the ball. So you've got to get that stuff first, and by working on it and giving it due diligence and spending time on it, it's the best thing that you can do to improve your game, because until you fix this part, the rest of your game isn't going to come along in the way that you really want. So reminder about that vision program is such an essential part of it. I also want to let you know about a free footwork program that I've created for you. I make the vision program and the footwork program because these are the two big things that let players down. So in the free footwork program, we're going to go through uh, forehand, volley, different footwork patterns for all of your shots. If you want that, I'll place a link up there, link down there. Same deal. Click on the link, I'll take you over to a page, NT details there, and I will send you this free program. Hopefully you have found this video to be helpful. Work on these footwork patterns. It will change stuff for you. You just have to do it enough times. Any comments, leave them down below. I always enjoy reading comments. If you enjoyed the video, give me that thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel before, it'd be wonderful if you could do that as well.